London, my city. It was a monstrous place. Commerce and trade had made it that way and filled its ever-expanding streets with the rural poor. Opportunity bred ambition, and ambition bred a new moneyed class of person who had previously known little of respectability. Can you play the one about the tinker and the maid? She does not know the song you mean, sir. She's about 17. I didn't ask you, did I? Do you wish me to be scared of you, sir? Are you? No, sir. I'm not feared of you. I felt compelled to make a proposal to Parliament to remedy society's growing problems. The brutality I saw had convinced me to turn my attention from my celebrated works of fiction and to accept the role of Magistrate of Westminster. And with my brother John, blind since youth, I resolved to create a new organization that would bring law and order. London needed a police force. Stick the warrant in there, yes? The bill. Then when you make an arrest, you whack them with it. Whip, 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 out it comes. You get one of these as well. Yeah, now, these, I made these, right? See this, yeah? GR. You know what that stands for? Good riddance. You said that, didn't you, Mr. Welsh? Right. Eh? Mr. Brogdon, we're ready to see you. Mr. Brogdon. You can read and write, can you? Uh, yes, Mr. Fielding, very well. Because most of your duties will be keeping records. We can test your metal on the streets gradually. You're required to swear on this book that the upholding of the law shall be your overriding duty and concern. We take no money. We take no favors. Only our wage. And our personal lives do not impinge. I've, I've, I've got to is that clear? Uh, as morning, sir. Oh, uh, sir. Oh, no. oh. Sir, I fear there's been a housebreaking and murder on my watch. The city was growing. While the poor were forced to dig into their cellars to extend their hovels with perilous wooden warrens, the newly rich luxuriated outward into the fields surrounding Mayfair and St James. I have been to the house this morning. There's no answer at all. The windows are all shuttered up. I dread to think. What... And you are the night watchman for the area, are you not? Were you asleep? It is extremely dark if there's no moon. Uh, I seem to recall there was comings and goings late all night from Mr Anderson's Irish voices. Sure they weren't Scottish? The owner's a Scot, is he not? They were Irish bellowing like drunken monkeys. Presumably you're paid by the parish to do your job. I'm not a physical entity at all in the normal run of things. I came to Bow Street straight this morning, did I not? We were also at Bow Street last night. I shall leave you to it, then. That is the echo of an empty house. Yeah. What's the man's name? Yeah. Anderson. I seem to remember he's in the sugar trade. Where's the servant's entrance? What's the sound of here, sir? Then, uh, would you admit us, please, Mr. Templer? Sir. Who was there? 
a medley of distressed domestics, all presumably deaf. Kindly tell your master, the Brothers Fielding magistrates wait upon his pleasure. It is a Sunday morning, sir. Being a gentleman of breeding, the master is at church. That time of the break-in, is that right? Honey, robbery. The only servant I made was questioned, is that right? Yes, sir. Well, I'll notify Mr. Oh. I'm expected by Mrs. Fielding. Um, they're out, sir. There's been a house-breaking and a murder in Mayfair. You're a new, are you not? What happened to the Negro? Um, dismiss, my lord. Yes. So the whisper came to me. What are you doing? Uh, writing notes upon crimes, my lord. My lord? My lord? May I assist your lordship in any fashion? What do you think about the manner in which business is conducted here, Mr... Brogdon. Thank you, my lord. I have been here but half an hour, sir. It seems to have been a rush of housebreakings. I'm glad at least that they keep a record of it. For I am hearing complaints. I will not interfere, of course. We do not wish a political police like there is in France. But you are aware, are you not, that it is I who ensures you are voted your money? I was not aware of that, my lord. You astound me, Mr. Ogden. Although I fear it is altogether typical of an enterprise which has woefully lost sight of its foundations. Let us hear the word of God. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. I'm not happy with he that said, new man. But Mr. Khan was in the altogether a better choice. And they turned in you will hand. concede, however, he did rather blot his copybook his house. by betraying us to a gang of murdering sodomites. <laughs> As I am now legally required to do, I publish the bans of marriage between Mr. Oliver Oliphant of St. George's, Hanover Square, and Miss Clarissa Anderson, spinster of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. Without me, you struggle to meet the man. Established three new plantations, each with over 300 Negroes. What an awful lot. We hope he does not inherit his manners as well as his money. <clears throat> Good trade, apparently. Well, it, it has allowed the father to give his daughter all that is needed, all the accomplishments. We are greatly looking forward to supper tomorrow. And we are greatly honoured to be entertaining you. Mr. Anderson, Henry Fielding. This is my brother and colleague, John. Mr. Anderson, uh, we... Are we? With your permission? Yes. I think that could be described Very as much. an attempt at discretion. These people. The girls plastered in white lead. It's the fashion, is it not? Is it? Marriage was not always built on a foundation of love. London's ever-sprouting mushrooms were often willing to sacrifice their daughters in exchange for a title and a respectable name. Ogden. How did you fare with the gentleman in Mayfair? Not well, my lord. The gentleman in question is alive, but he did not wish to speak to us. That is plainly ridiculous, Mr. Fielding. Had he been robbed? I believe so. Then turn your tail 
Bring your men and encourage him to speak with you. This is not an isolated incident, sir. Do you wish me to instruct you in clearer terms what your procedure and priorities must be? My lord, please do not presume. I will presume what I wish. The purpose of this operation was to enable us, gentlemen of means, to enjoy our lives, our persons, and our properties in security. I hope I do not misquote you. Your memory does you credit, my lord. But far from a diminution, your superintendency has seen a substantial increase in the rate of property crime. Well, to be fair, my lord, the figures reflect our improved methods of recording. How gratifying that must be for you. I have been kept waiting here for several hours, so I see no trouble in coming to the point and telling you that I was here this morning, gentlemen, to say there are whisperings about doing away with this enterprise entirely and of raising instead a bounty to be given to the thief takers who were at least able to return stolen property, prevent crimes like this one, and take no payment for it from the general taxation. But they do... Uh, uh, you are on borrowed time, Mr. Fielding. Mr. Fielding, look to your business. The city was drowning in a wave of crime like none before. Bands of robbers had taken to the streets. Housebreakings, murder and theft were daily recorded in the newspapers. There cannot be nothing at all. Nothing is precisely what there is. What are we sitting on? A packing case. The master will see you now. And the master does not take kindly to being interrupted on his day of rest and being instructed to receive visitors. Drop front desks to tear with armor lumets. And here, here's to the cabinet. Sir. It contained the, the silver, notable, notable items being wheat knives, soup spoons, forks, serving spoons, all engraved. If you care to tell us what happened. Butter knives, all engraved with RLA, entwined with a sugar bush, my crest. It, Mr. Anderson. Gentlemen, I did not wish you to come here. I am used to resolving my own difficulties. A carved and gilded console table stood here, next to which was a magnificent statue of Pan. Forgive me. There's too much to remember. Here was a portrait by Mr. Heyman of myself and my family. What of the upstairs room, sir? Everything is as it was. There's blood on the floor. Over there. That is not blood, that is wine. They discovered my cellar. They, they became drunk. Who did? Two of them. Afterwards, letting many others in. They were Irish. They removed everything. And where was your daughter? She was out calling. In the evening, sir? No, she, she is out calling now with Lady Oliphant and her son. Uh, last night she, she was at Randley Gardens. Here is a draft for her. 500 pounds, which you may draw from my banker in Fleet Street. That, I hope, will be enough for yourselves and for any expenses. What do you mean? When you go to the thieves, or whatever it is that you do. That is why you have visited me, so is it not? 
I am willing to pay for your services. I see there's been a misunderstanding. You may no longer go to your local magistrate or thief taker to arrange for your property to be miraculously bought back. How is it to be done now? With deference to the law, we're here to discover who robbed you. And of what use is that? Do you trust your servants, sir? Mr. Fielding? Mr. Fielding, we wish to speak to them, sir. My daughter is to be married this week to the son of a baronet. This is the fulfilment of my wishes for her. I must be allowed to have my property back so that the place may be respectable, so that we may be respectable. And if you cannot give me this, then I wish you to leave some. A few words, sir, that's all. No, you may not ask questions. And I wish you to take these men with you. I, I do not wish men like this in my house. I refuse to believe that none of you saw anything. How long have you been working here? Some months, sir. You were Irish. I read something of yours once, sir, in which you argued that it was equally bad to be dragooned on the highway as to be robbed in one's own home. Well, sir, it is not as anyone with a pennyworth of wit would plainly see. <laughs> Continue with the preparations. Do you suffer from gout, sir? What in hell does that matter? Well, your maid is mixing a tincture of tansy. As a sufferer myself, I find it of wondrous assistance in relieving pain. I'm afraid it's time to visit your dealer acquaintance in Seven Dials. You and Mr. Pento should question him about the Irish. Uh, best take Mr. Brogdon, too. is not visiting the elephants. Yeah. No, was she at Remy Gardens last night? Dr. Hunter! Uh, not an emergency, I hope. Uh, Mr. Fielding, um, I'm a friend of the Andersons and calling to play some hands of whist. And in there are your cards. Excuse me, sir. Queer moment for cards. Hunter's a women's surgeon. I lay bets that box contains Penny Royal. To be mixed with taxi. It's a poison which, as far as I'm aware, has only one medical use. Abortion. Small wonder he desires secrecy. Seven Dials was the most notorious slum in London and two minutes' walk from Covent Garden. Families lived six or more to a room. Gin laced with turpentine and sulfuric acid deadened the senses of Europe's most hopeless poor. I've never been down here before. You're not supposed to come down here. Storms of the island. Oh, it's good for us then, isn't it? Here we are. Oh, God. Right, in and out as fast as we can, yes? There's a room at the back, all right? Away. Follow me, right? Stay where you are! What's this about? A lot of stuff lifted from a house in Audley Street last night. You heard anything about it? Audley Street, that new one is here. Sugar merchant. 
A lot of silver, a lot of pictures. I'm out of that game, Mr. Welsh. I'm not with the Irish you anymore. You weren't any of that lot into clearing houses. It's dangerous to ask, Mr. Welsh. It's dangerous to be here. I suppose that's what you call a diversion. There is tension, and to my mind, they are back from Ireland and back in business. And there's a silence around them, thick, no one saying a word. This is something very different, though. Robbery, aggravating. Mary. I have come up against these men before. They infest like a dose of lice. They are not to be shaken off. So what is to be done? We must apply our minds to the recovery of Mr. Anderson's asparagus tongue. Now, you should go back and find your man in Seven Dials, which is what Lord Newcastle would wish. Where's that girl got to? Mary! Why do you not do as the others used to do, huh? Do not piss in our backyard, and we will not piss in yours. Or you should find her having a little bit of the medicine that the other one got. <laughs> get up, get up. <laughs> Service. I'm very glad he's superintending at the wedding. He's a kind man. I'm very tired, Papa. I've been out too much in the fresh air. Way altered. Is there any feeling upon you, any feeling of any kind not previously felt? Have you thought at all about those events and... I wish your mother was alive. I wish she were alive too. Clarissa. Do you have any desires which you have not had before? If so, you must keep them concealed. They must not be betrayed. They would ruin you, do you understand? Yes. They would utterly ruin you. There would be no future for you or for the family. It is as grave as that, do you understand? You're your papa's legacy. The most valuable thing a girl could bring to a marriage was her virginity. Aside, that is, from her dowry. My second wife, a housemaid, did not carry that with her. I was forced by conscience to marry her because I had ruined her as a commodity. wickedness to force my life upon her. You will look after her, won't you? When I'm dead. Oh, Henry. Damn these men. 
Welsh has had no luck in Seven Dials. We should return to Wardley Street and extract the information we need. Someone there surely knows who these men are and where they may be found. Do you think we're safe here? The way to be safe is to hang them. To hang a lot of them. And we will never be invaded again. Step. What the hell is this? He's sitting on his own fucking furniture, eating dinner off his own poxy plates! We will not have this manner of doing business. Paying people to return what they have taken, it is blackmail. This is where Newcastle would have us end up. The magistrates of Westminster for your master. Mr. Anderson is not at home, sir. He's sitting in his dining room, you egregious cigarette. This pigeon's transmogrified. It really is uncommonly good. Only 50% of this enterprise is blind. He is not at home to your worships. Tell him we have Tansy and Penny Royal for his buttonhole. How did you make contact with them? Mr. Anderson, this no longer concerns your property alone. We too have been invaded. We need you to call those men back. Do you have any conceit of what it cost me to invite them here? I was bound to a chair, sir, and watched foul men. And in the absence of any help from those pledged to protect me, I was forced to watch them carry back my harpsichord, my silver, my books, and hear one of them whistle as he did so. If we do not apprehend them, others will be assailed. Damn others! Leave me to myself and my life! Mr. Anderson, when we find them, we will prosecute them for the rape of your daughter in open court. Unless you cooperate now. No, sir. That is not how the law works. She must report it first. Or you must, sir. And I think you just have. Mr. Anderson? for the return of my property in installments. I suppose it is pleasant that one seems rather, well, in the country out here. But one does not have a townhouse to appreciate the outdoors, does one? Why do you not speak kindly to your father about a more fashionable address in St. James? Pardon me? St. James? There is nothing that would please me more in the world than to be married and have a townhouse there. Perhaps we might direct his thoughts on the matter together, as two ladies. I have asked for the return of the Haman and offered another 100 if it comes tonight. Why can you not arrest them where they are, if she knows the address? If we take them here, with surprise on our side, we stand a chance. We have but three able-bodied men to there. I, I did not know them anymore. Take this letter to the address marked. 
Go to Bow Street and fetch the others. Please be quiet. And, and, and see that they come through the back door. Please, allow me this. He's a baronet. If there's to be a grandson, the child would inherit the baronetcy. My blood goes with her. That was once the blood of shopkeepers in Dumbarton. You appreciate this. We're not here to hurt you. We'll leave that, sir. But you will have to ensure your guest depart soon. Do you ride? Of course she rides, Father. And hunt? A young lady would be more interested in the society, Sir Roger. There is plenty of time for those concerns when you become mistress. There is so little good hunting to be had in London. That's one of the enormous mountains of pleasure which are set exclusively aside for the country. There's a great lot of hunting to be had at Seaton Park, to which you must come. I cannot remember whether you have an estate or not, sir. Perhaps we might hear her play a little in the harpsichord. I'm sure they do not She's wish... She's greatly accomplished, Mama. Why do you not play that piece you have been practicing? So that we may send our guests on their way with a light heart? by this. I've been fucked. I have been fucked and fucked again. Anderson, contain the child. Sir Roger, would you take me home? Oliver? I do not understand. There is no grace for this girl. You have deceived us, sir. Society would um, hesitate to speak of it. Polite society, as you will understand, sir, will speak of little else. Oh, perhaps a move back to Scotland, Edinburgh, say. Edinburgh is not so far away. Not so far away that gossip would not fly there and tongues click. Mr. Welsh. These shutters should be put to if we're to be sitting here in the light, talking. Do you have sons, sir? I have one son. A son is a soothing and hopeful thing. There were three of me. Robert, the eldest. And we shall need to have the monies laid out. A bag of coins will serve to occupy their minds. Yes. Very well, Mr. Welsh. A man stood in the piazza in Covent Garden selling wooden animals. The twins were very much taken with a, a wooden hand which laid small wooden eggs. The man who had carved them looked so foul. I believe he gave them the smallpox. 
my three sons and my wife were buried within one week. I have some understanding of how that may feel. You were well born, were you not, sir? I was not. Those who are born poor and make their way in the world find that dishonor and misfortune are like shadows at their back, waiting to reclaim and punish. Well, sir, they have fallen upon me twice. First killing my sons, and lately making my daughter a whore. Mr. Anderson, we will apprehend these men and see them hanged. That is of absolutely no consequence or comfort. It is important your daughter doesn't cry out. Sure. It is important. Twice in two days, I am invaded in my own home and instructed. I will take care that she does not cry. That is a father's duty. When the time comes, open the door to them and then return to your pantry. Yes, everything must appear normal. There isn't going to be any violence, is there, Mr. Wilson? Oh, wait a minute. Take my brother to a safer place. Oh, I'll do it. This way, Mr. Fielding. Gentlemen, and make yourselves comfortable. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Yonder, did it not? We were blessed to find it, sir. I'll tell you. <laughs> but as you said, it's a very singular piece. It's a cold few days when my family and I sat for Mr. Heyman. He painted summer in the background. Late summer. Long shadows. Nice to have business with you. Come on! Do I want to think about that for a minute? We'll do for you, you bastard. Lads, get out. <laughs> Mr. Fielding. 
Take him to the gatehouse. This room in the copter, Mr. Fieldy? The gatehouse. Tell them this is a condemned man and to look to their business. I do not wish the stench of this person under my roof. Come on, you. I have been a poor father to you, Clarissa. A poor, poor father to you all. You were born. When you were born, I, I thought that nothing could prevent me from keeping you safe. That hope's gone now. I wish for you to forgive me as I cannot forgive myself. Mr. Anderson, uh, we are about to leave. I wanted to express my thanks. I know how difficult all this has been. I've done something far more difficult. Oh. Would the pursuit of justice always exact such a terrible price? Did law and order matter or make a difference? Was there really a place for us in this society? How's it gone? We have apprehended the gang leader, one Tom Jones, coincidentally. <laughs> Is this a joke? Far from it, my lord. He is to hang, along with others not yet in custody. And the merchant's properties are restored to him? For the most part. Excellent. Congratulations. Let us drink to it. I hope you're not anticipating any more difficulty from these Irish. If trouble arises, we will deal with it. That is, after all, what we are paid for. I shall be looking in on you again. Your health. And yours. Good, John. Yes. Yes, we did. And we set a precedent. Henry, we didn't rape the girl. We didn't rob the house. No. And the past few months have yielded me the odd intellectual insight and even some moral instruction. But I'm worried about what we may have brought upon ourselves with this experiment. Now that this new element has entered our lives. Terror. London was never far from descending into anarchy. It hung in the air like a threat, hovering over the poor and the desperate. We had imprisoned Tom Jones, the leader of the gang, but his royal family had many members who would not take kindly to this affront to their pride. And should we not prevail, what horrors yet unknown might engulf this city?